deserts are dry and barren. There are hardly any plants for the plant-eating animals to survive. But this does not mean that the deserts are devoid of any animals. In the driest parts of the desert, wind brings in bits of plants and seeds that are then eaten by the small insects. These small insects are in turn then eaten by spiders, lizards, snakes and they in turn are eaten by birds, thus forming a cycle. In contrast to the dry desert, the wet deserts have more to offer for animal life to thrive. Grasses, cacti and scattered trees provide enough food for animals like rabbits, antelopes, camels and even for the kangaroos in Australia. These antelopes are called the oryx. They are found in Namib desert of South Africa. The spade foot toad has not lost his way in the desert, but it is very much a part of the desert. Toads come from a family of amphibians and like all other amphibians, they too must keep themselves moist. But certain kinds of amphibians have learned to survive even in very dry conditions like desert. The deserts of Western North America are home to some spade foot toads. These toads lay their eggs in small pools formed just after rainfall. The turning of an egg into an adult frog is called metamorphosis. The tadpoles that hatch from these eggs turn into full-fledged toads in just two weeks. This is much faster than the normal time a tadpole takes to turn into a toad. The reason why the tadpoles of the desert grow faster is tadpoles cannot live without water and the water of the pool can dry up soon. So, before the pool dries up, the tadpoles have to develop and come on land. The hind feet of this toad is just like a spade. Thus, they are known as spade foot toads. With the help of their spade-like feet, these toads burrow themselves into the soil in order to escape the dry heat of the desert, coming out only during the night. These spade foot toads can remain buried alive for 11 months coming out for a short time in spring and early summer when they breathe. Water is essential for any life to survive on planet Earth and finding water in desert is not an easy task. Animals like antelopes travel long distance to find water holes while horses and asses break the dry ground with their hooves to get to small amount of water under the surface. There are certain animals living in the desert that don't need to drink water. Like the Jeranook, it gets all the requirement of water from the leaves it eats. The water comes from a chemical process that releases energy from food. This is the round-tailed ground squirrel. It is found in the deserts of America. It is another animal that doesn't require drinking water because it gets all the water from the food it eats, like the cactus flower. The cactus flower is rich in water and serves dual purpose of providing food as well as water to the squirrel. It has become important for all animals living in deserts to retain water that they drink by adopting various means that prevents water loss from their body. Camel is one huge animal roaming the deserts, surviving the harsh conditions. They have the ability to go without food and water for a very long time. They have web of skin joining their toes which spreads out when they walk. 
keeping the boat from sinking in the soft sand. When wind blows, the camels close their nostrils and eyes, thus protecting themselves from the sand. Men have domesticated camels and have been using them to travel long distances across seas of sand. Because of this, they are also known as the ships of the desert. Birds and mammals are warm-blooded because their body temperature is always the same. Lots of energy is used up in order to maintain the constant body temperature and the energy comes from the food. Cold-blooded animals are those who don't require keeping their body temperature constant. They have the advantage of spending their lives being cold and inactive. This helps them use less energy. Lizards and snakes are cold-blooded animals that roam the desert. Being cold-blooded has great advantage in desert. Breathing makes animals lose water. The warm-blooded animals lose much water as they have to breathe at constant speed, while cold-blooded animals breathe very, very slowly while they are resting and thus lose less water. The other disadvantage of being warm-blooded is that the animals have to sweat to keep themselves cool, while the cold-blooded animals just let their body temperature rise. Thus, reptiles can survive on less water than mammals and birds, making them expert desert dwellers. But there are other kinds of desert animals that totally avoid facing the problems of heat and lack of water. They are the desert spiders and scorpions. They never take tension and whenever the need arises, they just become dormant. Dormant is a stage when the animal becomes totally inactive. It neither moves nor eats and appears as if it is dead. It can stay in this condition for weeks and months. They wake up only when the nature provides them with a chance to find food. Another time they wake up is when they have to mate to produce offsprings. These snails of the Sahara Desert are not dead. They are dormant, waiting for the rains to arrive when they can again come to life. And the rain can take years to come by. Same is the case with the shrimps of Australia. The wind blows their eggs until they settle in the hollow of a rock. The eggs stay there until it rains then, when the hollow fills with water, the eggs hatch. The birds like vultures and eagles roam the vast desert in search of food and can spot their prey on the ground from a long distance. Step eagle, found in the deserts of Central Asia, hunt desert rodents and scavenge carcasses, while Hubara bustard feeds on seeds, plants lizards and beetles. This vast expanse of sand is Sahara, the largest desert on planet Earth, covering one twelfth of the Earth's land surface. Starting from Atlantic Ocean, the Sahara stretches across the whole of North Africa to the Red Sea, covering parts of 11 countries. The 11 countries that form the huge Sahara Desert are Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Western Sahara, Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Chad and Sudan. As we move towards South Africa, the Sahara Desert starts to diminish and ends gradually in the south as it blends with semi-desert called Sahel. Sahara has a great reserve of oil fields and the richest oil fields occur in southern Algeria and eastern Libya. The 11 countries 
spread across the Sahara Desert indicate that civilization flourished even under harsh conditions. But few people live in Sahara. On an average, there is less than one person per square kilometer. Timbuktu in Mali has been for centuries a trading post for merchants crossing the Sahara. It is also a center of Islamic culture and learning. But living in desert is as much hard for humans as for the plants and animals of that region. Because it is not just a matter of living in desert, one has to learn to survive here and to survive under the harsh conditions one has to protect oneself against extreme temperatures one has to find food and water when both are in short supply and knowing the way to the nearest water hole could even lead to a matter of life and death these conditions make human beings unsuitable for living in desert but these kinds of difficulties have not stopped people from living in desert. They have learned to be more resourceful and have developed unique lifestyles that increase their chances of survival in the ever testing environment. The people who have made the vast deserts their home have over the years learned to respect the power of the desert by gathering in-depth knowledge of the dry landscapes and its ecology. In the past, many desert people lived a life of a nomad. They travelled from place to place in search of food and water. They often carried supply of water with them. Until 20th century, there were very few paved roads and railways in the world's deserts, and many desert people travelled on foot. They used camels to ride and carry goods. Camels are very tough and useful animals in the deserts. They can travel for days without food and water. They also provide milk meat and wool. Nothing of camel is wasted. The camel dung is used as fuel, while the urine is used as shampoo. The skin is used for making tents and also as water carriers. These are the sand people of Kalahari Desert in Africa. They have unique vessel to hold water, a hollow ostrich egg. The shell of an ostrich egg is very strong and big enough to hold water for a day-long journey. Most of the nomadic people were animal herders having animals like goats and camels. These animals can easily adapt to the climate of a desert and it also provided milk to them. The dead animal's leather was used to make sandals and tents. Some people even today lead a nomadic lifestyle. During dry season, they settle close to towns and cities, while during the rains, they shift their base deep into the desert. Finding the way in the vast desert is similar to finding one's way in the sea. The sand spread Till the horizon can make us get lost without a trace. But for the nomadic people, these empty lands are full of information. This dry riverbed, the typical baobab tree or the peculiar looking rock can all be signals telling the nomads where to go. Camels played an important role in the lives of nomads and caravans. Caravans were a group of traders or pilgrims who travelled across the desert like the trains travelling in modern days. These caravans had thousands of camels that navigated the desert sea slowly and steadily. Caravans are things of the past. 
Today, even the remotest deserts have roads and are connected by a web of railway tracks. People of the deserts are now opting for four-wheelers instead of the camels. The governments of the countries located on the desert land are also taking steps to develop the desert land using modern-day technologies. Like the desert roads in Saudi Arabia have solar-powered satellite telephones along the highways just in case an automobile breaks down or meets with an emergency. Since ancient times, not the entire desert people lead the life of a nomad. People have learned to settle at oasis. Oasis is a place in the desert where there is always water. The underground water bubbles up to the surface, forming a spring. And palm trees, along with the other trees that cannot normally survive in the desert, grow here. Oasis are a perfect place to develop a city or a town where people can settle and lead a more developed lifestyle. It is important resting place for people and camels travelling across the desert and also for migratory birds which stop to drink water and feed on the fruits of the trees. Oasis can be very large, supporting whole villages and towns. Siwa is one such Egyptian village in the Libyan desert. It is considered to be the oldest oasis settlement and even today life has changed very little here. Riyadh was once a small desert town in Saudi Arabia. But after the discovery of oil, the small town experienced a boom, transforming everyone's life in that small town. People became rich overnight and the kings of the country built luxurious palaces, mosques and developed the suburbs. There was a time when people thought the deserts were good for nothing barren lands. But today, oil pipelines crisscross these deserts, carrying oil and gas to the refineries and ports. These pipelines have become the lifeline of the people of desert. Exploiting the deserts revealed that they were not only rich in oil, but had a vast reserve of minerals that included gold, silver, copper and many many precious stones. The abundant richness of the deserts has made many nomads to give up their nomadic lives and settle in cities and towns. The modern city offers many opportunities to grow and children can also go to schools to study so that they do not have to face the hardship of a nomadic life. Some countries are carrying out expensive programs of transforming barren desert lands into fertile farmlands. Water for the crops is usually pumped from deep underground or carried by long pipelines from elsewhere in the country. In some cases, government has forced nomadic people to settle down because of their independent border crossing lifestyle, which meant they were not loyal to any particular country. But there are also people in poor countries who miss their much freer way of life and have to make their ends meet by selling souvenirs to the tourists or working in factories and offices. Some people remain nomads by choice. Mongolian herders of the Gobi Desert, like all desert people, continue to migrate from the pastelin to pastelin and live in their distinctive tents called girls or yurts. They continue their nomadic lifestyle even today. But the difference is that many herders now round their herds on motorbikes rather than horseback. The cold deserts of Gobi and Thakla Makan in China are deserts with extreme climate. They have severe cold climate with very little rainfall. Even then, herders and travelling traders have crossed these deserts 
for thousands of years. In Gobi and Thakla Makan, one can find two humped camels called back train camels. For centuries, traders carried silk and spices from China to Europe on these camel bags. The Thakla Makan desert is mainly covered with wind blown sand. The sandstorm here are so fierce that the sand dunes reach to the height of 200 to 300 meters. There are hardly any roads in Gobi Desert. The Asiatic wild ass and Mongolian gazelle along with back train camels are a few animals found in the desert. Karakoram in Mongolia is known as the capital of the yesteryear's warlord Chengiz Khan. He controlled his empire from this place in the 13th century. Close to this place is the Altai Shan mountain range. This mountain is a refuge to wild endangered snow leopards and vultures. The Yellow River or Wang Ho River skirts the edges of Gobi Desert and irrigates a large area of farmland. People living in present have a moral responsibility to understand their past and safeguard the future for its coming generations. Earth's climate has been ever changing, so the deserts will naturally expand or shrink and sometimes may even disappear. Algeria is now a desert, but it was not a few centuries back. Caves in Onet in Algeria depict people herding cattle and hunting hippopotamus from canoes. They also show buffalo, elephants and rhinoceros. All this clearly indicates that this place was not a desert previously. The scientists across the globe are of the view that the world's climate will grow warmer in future. The reason for this behavior will be greenhouse effect. In warmer areas, which are now dry countries, rainfall might increase. The present day deserts might disappear and new ones may be formed. The deserts of Southwest Asia may vanish in a manner as if they were never there. That of Australia may not disappear just because they are distant from the ocean. In other parts of the globe, life can become harder for people living there. Parts of central USA and southern Europe could turn dry, forming new deserts. On the positive side, warming could lead to more evaporation, more clouds and wetter conditions, thus improving conditions for farming. Some scientists fear that warmer air and increased rainfall might alter ocean currents. If this happens, the cold currents flowing along the west coast of the continents might weaken, allowing layer of warm water to form above them. This will result in the Atacama and the Sonoran deserts to become wet and stormy. The changing climate affecting the lands will also start affecting the people living on it. If deserts were to change into fertile pastures or croplands and croplands converted into deserts, the lives of the people there will have to take a drastic turn. Travelling nomads would have to settle down and become farmers. Farmers might be forced to abandon their fields and go elsewhere and look for an alternate profession. There are ways to conserve farmlands and prevent them from turning into deserts. Trees planted in lines can shield land from the wind, thus drying the ground more slowly and less likely to get buried in the sand. Crops can be grown between these lines of trees and leaves of these trees can be used to feed the livestock. This is known as corridor farming. 
dry farming system of USA can also be used to fertilize the soil. In dry farming, after a crop has been harvested, the field is left bare, but ploughed occasionally to kill and bury any weeds. After three years, the rotting weeds have nourished the soil for the new crop to be sown. The soil in many desert areas is very salty for most crop plants. Even in certain plants such as date palms, some varieties of almond trees grow here. Changes are happening throughout the world's deserts. The Sahel is a wide band of dry grassland. They scrub along the southern edge of Sahara. Government in Sahel countries have encouraged nomads to settle. They have drilled boreholes to bring water from deep underground. People living here now keep more number of animals and graze them around their village. But this new wave of life might turn out to be a risky proposition. In case drought strikes, the people cannot move anywhere else to graze their animals. It might so happen that the animals may overgaze, resulting in famine. Today, modern gadgets like mobile phones, radios, internets have brought deserts more close to other places and to the world as a whole. The desert land has become a part of the global community. The sun shines bright in the desert and wind energy is also in abundance. The vast open land of the desert provides a huge platform for generating energy from the sun and wind power. The wind and solar energy are non-conventional sources and are in good supply and there is no way it will be exhausted. This will help preserve other resources that diminish after a period of time. Even though the scientists keep working and predicting, nobody can exactly tell the future phase of the planet Earth. What will happen to the world after a century? Change in climate will be disastrous or there will be just a negligible change in the temperature of the world? Not having definite answers about the climate makes the future of the desert also uncertain. There is a possibility that in future some deserts may expand while others may shrink to a level that they may disappear totally from the face of the earth. Maybe somewhere on the earth new deserts may take shape or there might still be a bigger shock or a huge surprise in store for us human beings and other living organisms of planet earth who knows